Also in Division 2 is Ben Mushemi, navigated on this event by Evans Mwenda. Whilst he waits for a new car to arrive, he was once again putting more miles on the N10, but it was not performing well. The engine management system was causing problems and the brakes were inconsistent. They eventually finished 16th to take 3rd in the division. Said Hamad is a newcomer to Division 2, having won Division 3 last year. They were having a difficult rally with the traction control on the N10 not working. All the drive was in the rear wheels, which made the handling awkward. They finished 13th, but more importantly, 2nd in Division 2. This last section, it was not flat out because the same, same problem with traction control started. It's like you are driving a rear wheel. Uh, yeah, so it's hard uh, and I'm not good in rear wheel. Yeah. Since its upgrade, our free and Timu Khan's impressor had become a different animal. Where before they were driving between breakdowns, now the car is domineering and they were relishing the increased performance. On right hand bends, the fuel in the tank left the pumps sucking air, but they were still quick enough to take the division win and came 11th overall. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun compared to what I used to have before. It's, I mean, now you have to be awake in the car. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going really quickly sometimes. <laughs> sometimes your brain doesn't keep up with the speed of the car, so you start wondering, okay, what was I going to do here? <laughs> Alfie's win places him well out in front on the division table, ahead of Ben Mushemi by 85 points. Said Hamad climbs to fourth with Alec Horsey down in fifth place. As the cars had come and gone from the centrally located service park at Cariene, it had been a full-time job for the support crews. The leaders are now in the closing two stages with Alistair Cavan and Gavin Lawrence firmly in the lead. The stages were important for Carl Tundu and Tim Jessup to continue to climb up the leaderboard on each section. As if they hadn't already been punished enough, they were dealt one last crushing blow when the center diff turned to porridge and they were forced to retire. Assad and Salim Khan were in a bubble and would only gain if a car ahead faltered, but none did. All they could do was drive to maintain the position. They lost 12 seconds to the car ahead, but pulled away from the car behind to finish 7. A sad Anwan crashing shape with chasing Peter Horsey for 5th, but the N10 was no match to the Evo 9, and they decided to settle for 6th rather than risk not finishing at all. Peter Horsey and Andrew Dwey were more concerned about catching Phineas Kimafi ahead of them than what was going on behind. They were quicker on each of the final two stages and despite this brief spin, gained enough time to dislodge Kimafi and take fourth place. Phineas Kimafi and George Mwangi reluctantly gave way to Horsey, but it didn't matter. Just to be dicing amongst the leaders was immensely satisfying. For his local fans, finishing fifth was a job well done. Padre Chaga and Raju Semi were forced to race all the way to the end. They were faster through the penultimate stage, but the 12 seconds gain was not enough and they had to settle for third. The two minute penalty had lost them a place. Being second on the road today, we had no idea what was happening behind what Ian was doing or what anyone else was doing. Um, even Alistair, the times are so short between the stages, get into the next and he's taking off and we're just getting in. There's no time for error, no time for even a tire change in between transports. It was nice and tight and compact. 
It's always remarkable how quick Ian Duncan and Amos Slash managed to get the Nissan Patrol through the stages. We were under pressure to stay in front of Chaga, but this is when Duncan performs at his best. They came second for the second time this season. But Ian, it's shown how far back you are competitively from Alistair, though. Because yeah, you, yeah, you, no, like, see, we're three minutes behind or something, so... Yeah. And so there's no way you could get any more out uh, of this? Not three minutes, <laughs> maybe two <laughs> seconds here and one there. But <laughs> <laughs> Alistair Cavan and Gavin Lawrence had held the lead from the start and only needed to maintain a reasonable pace over the final two stages to secure the win. But having settled into a rhythm, they were on a roll, winning the final stage by over a minute. This was Kavanagh's first win in five years, firmly putting him back on top. As long as I had the pace, that was comforting. Um, you know, if you don't win on a particular day, it's not the end of the world. But So I've been quite happy for the last six months or so when the pace was back and, you know, we were setting faster stage times again. But now it's becoming more regular and hopefully we can continue with that. The final control was under the finish arch inside the service park. And despite the official results, for the thousands watching, there was only one winner, the local boy Phineas Kimathi. <laughs> Alistair Kavanagh and Gavin Lawrence had dominated the rally, eventually winning by well over three minutes. Peter Horsey incurred a 10 second penalty, which placed him equal with Kimathi. But on the furthest, cleanest rule, they retained fourth. 22 cars finished, with the times across the field separated by 50 minutes. Tail and Charlie were Paris Pandy and Roy McKenzie, who had successfully finished their first ever rally. In the championship, Alistair Cavan had extended his lead to 47 points. Ian Duncan dislodges Baldur Chaga for second, and Peter Horsey replaces Lee Rose for fifth.